The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today, we're going to talk about feeding edible beans. Um, How much nutrients do they require? When's the best time to apply? Can starter fertilizer make a difference? To answer these questions and more, I'm joined now by Megan Scott. She's a field marketer with Hensel Co-op. Hi, Megan. Hey, uh, great to have you back on the Edible Bean School. Yeah. Hey, Bern. Thanks for thanks for having me on again. Hey, let's start this off with a simple question. You know, do we treat all edible beans the same when it comes to fertility? You know, we have large seed of beans. We have small seed of beans. Do some, you know, need more fertility than others? Yeah. So the short answer is no. When we talk about edible bean fertility, we're really going to group all those together. So whether it's a white bean, black bean, kidney, or azuki, think more about your yield potential than about which market class you're dealing with. Yeah. Now, now how do we determine fertility needs here, Megan? You know, and you know, and what's the best time to apply? Yeah. So a couple of things to think about here. Really. Having a a solid soil test that's recent is going to be the best way to lead you into a good recommendation. And then if you do have an understanding of what your yield potential may be, the combination of those two things are going to lead you to the best fertility recommendation. And in terms of timing of application, generally speaking, I would say the most popular time is that we do a spring broadcast of all our needs up front for that crop. There are other safe ways of applying it, though. It could be a two-by-two starter band. It could be a sprayed-on application of 28%. Those those are all acceptable as well. Now, what about nitrogen, um, Megan? Um, you know, beans are legumes, you know, and how so how much nitrogen, you know, can they fix and, and how much nitrogen uh, do we need to apply? Yeah, so you're right. They are legumes. They're going to do the bulk of the work, so they are going to produce most of the nitrogen that they need. We do, however, recommend you still apply some nitrogen. So average application rates are going to be in that 50 to 75 pounds of actual nitrogen. And where we see the biggest benefit to that is in situations where you might have root rot. So, you know, previous field history or circumstances leading up to root rot are really going to be where they benefit from that nitrogen application. Now, what about source of nitrogen, uh, Megan? Uh, Is there a preferred option here? Yeah, so we do have many different ways that that it can be safely applied. ESN is something that we've used and had really great luck with uh, with our edible beans. So that's kind of our preferred source that we go to. But we have lots that use, you know, urea, 28%, those kinds of sources of nitrogen as well. Yeah. Now, what about phosphorus and potassium? Uh, You know, how much is required um, to feed edible beans? Yeah, so let's talk an average crop of, you know, 2,400 pounds the acre, or about 40 bushels. A crop of that size is going to remove about 35 pounds of actual phosphorus and 35 pounds of actual potassium. So try and make sure you're at least looking after what that crop's going to remove. Uh, something else to consider when it comes to potassium would be a foliar application. And this would ideally be done along with the fungicide at kind of that first fungicide timing so we'd say maybe like r one and a half and at that time you you should have a synergistic effect between the foliar potassium and the the fungicide application and and have an increase in yield now megan what about manure um you know it's an option for some producers you know is there a fit here in edible beans yeah so absolutely it is a possibility to use manure i i do say, however, you should proceed with caution and really take a look at what your crop is going to need for that season and don't over apply manure in any capacity. The goal would not be to get an overly lush crop. We don't want to ask for extra vegetation that's going to cause white mold issues or any other quality problems. So really matching your your manure to what that crop needs is what's most important if you're going to go that route. Um, How aware do growers need to be of uh, micronutrient levels here? You know, things like uh, manganese. Sure. So edible beans are responsive to some micronutrients. Manganese and zinc are two that come to mind that are quite common. So again, if you have soil test records that are up to date that would show a deficiency or maybe you just have previous field experience that's going to tell you that there are deficiencies in some areas of the field, then you should address those, you know, whether it's through a two by two starter band or foliar applications, those would all be acceptable ways of of addressing micronutrients. Mm -hmm. Now, from a marketing pers- perspective, uh, Megan, are there watchouts when applying micronutrients? Yeah. 
So that brings up a good point, and it is a good thing to ask whoever your provider is of micronutrients because having phosphites in those products will cause MRLs at the export level. So we really need to make sure that none of those products that you guys are using would contain any phosphites. Hey, final question for you, that, and that is, you know, it won't be too long before planters are rolling out there and, and edibles go in the ground. Um, what role can starter fertilizer play in a successful crop? Um, is it necessary? And, you know, you know what, are, what are growers need to consider here? Yeah, so starter fertilizer with edible beans, we maybe think about differently in comparison to other crops. So really, we want edible beans planted into really fit, really warm soil. And in, in those environmental conditions, we don't really see the same benefit to a starter fertilizer that we would with, you know, planting into a cold soil. So that's still an opportunity to apply starter fertilizer, whether it be as a two by two band, but you you cannot apply any starter fertilizer directly with the seed as it's too sensitive to that. So avoid those kinds of applications. But certainly if if you're set up to do a two by two starter band, it's an acceptable way to apply some fertilizer. Well, Megan, hey, some great insights. Uh, we always appreciate you making time for the Edible Bean School. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bern.